May is the gateway to summer, and for me, there's only ever been one May song, and that's Staines Morris. And for this, I have to put the blame on Morris On, an album that came out the same year that I did, and every note of which I can call to mind at any moment. Staines Morris is always somewhere in my internal playlist, and a special memory it evokes is helping my mum to pick May Blossom for winemaking. Which makes it sound as though I grew up in a rural idyll, but actually we were out in the sprawling estates of East Hull and the hawthorn bushes belonged to the council and I loved it there. After a lifetime of singing this song, I learned its origins less than 24 hours ago and I'm really excited to share this with you. So welcome one and all to a special mini May episode of Handed Down where, as always, we celebrate traditional songs and the people who sing them. Like many other folk songs, this song has got its origin in the theatre, or at least the words do. It's from a play called Actian and Diana, written by Robert Cox. And it was published in 1665, but it was almost certainly written earlier. Robert Cox was known to be a strolling player who was famous for his drolls, which were funny plays that were just about permitted under the Puritans, even when the theatres were officially closed. Actian and Diana draws on classical myths, but there's a lot of distinctive English characters too, mainly stock characters, comedy characters, together with a really big bag full of weird jokes, funny business and questionable attitudes. Early in the play, a character known only as Bumpkin goes looking for love with these words. Maypole, I come, and if the wenches there increase my pains and scorn to love, I'll beat out all their brains. Yeah, right. At which point he exits, and three country wenches and a huntsman come on and sing the maypole dance. And these are the words that we know as Staines Morris. But they weren't singing the tune that we know today. Today's tune was put together with the words by William Chappell in his 1859 book, popular music of the olden time. He got the tune from Playford, who describes it as a country dance, but it was previously published in an Elizabethan loop book by one William Ballot. Both the tune and the song have survived, which is the hallmark of a good and a popular song. And like many old dance tunes, it's been adopted by the Morris dancing tradition and lives on. Now, I haven't done anything fancy with the arrangement of this song. I just sang it with a guitar the same way I've been doing for years and years. But I have restored the missing fifth verse, which appears in the original play. I've not heard anyone else perform this verse, so see if you can spot it. Happy summer to all listeners in the Northern Hemisphere. And to everyone, thank you so much for listening to the podcast. Gave 
take them all again and more it will never make them poor then to the maple haste away for it is now a holiday then to the maple haste away Prime to your bed's rear.